you know, that day I came home and I was like, okay, well, let me see, you know, like, let me see what other jobs I could, I could go get. Um, because, you know, I was the breadwinner mm -hmm. for our family at that point, And and I just didn't know how to function without a paycheck, you know. <laughs> I had gotten, we had gotten so used to this, you know, type of lifestyle, a regular paycheck, you know, where I knew we would be able to pay our bills. And so I guess I spent about 30 minutes looking on LinkedIn. And then, you know, I just thought, okay, well, we've been talking about opening our own firm. Like, maybe this is the time. Let's, the best let's just do it. Right. <laughs> and Charles was like, uh, duh. Uh, <laughs> he'd been telling me for years, like, we've got to do this. we got to do this. And um, so that was kind of the, the pivotal point as far as my direction and our direction, you know, as a family with opening, you know, our law firm, which is a family business. Exactly. My husband is not a lawyer, but he does the marketing, the operations. So clearly you can do it without him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the lawyer, but you, he makes me look good. Exactly. And, um, and it's been, that's been really one of the greatest blessings in our lives is in addition to obviously our, our family life and our home life is being able to build a business together that we enjoy, that we both have our own lanes and we're able to collaborate. And I appreciate the work that he does. And I see him in a totally different light. And I know the same, you know, That's for definitely him. incredible because, you know, a lot of people can't, you know, they can't even get along at home, let alone do business right. together. <laughs> yeah. And I can see how, you know, couples or even family members that go into business, I mm -hmm. see it all the time with clients right. where, you know, they, well, they you're think, in the line of business. But. Right. <laughs> yeah. They go into business and, and things are, are going well. And then there's something that happens and and it can cause rifts in in relationships and, and business yeah, as well for sure clearly you're a very strong woman and adversity seems like has got nothing on you uh, <laughs> what would you give advice for our new generation or women who have been suppressed a little bit right the ones mm -hmm. that always had the dream and never really pursued it mm -hmm. and you know because we have a lot of you know monkeys in our head that, that right. just don't let us proceed. So what would be your big advice for them? I would say one thing is to surround yourself with people that support you and That's uplift so you. Um, I've had people in my life that have been good and bad. Um, even people that are very close to me that have dragged me down. And I've had to learn how to distance myself from that and that energy and to be able to love from afar. You know, I love you, but I just can't have you, you know, disrupting my peace. So I think that that's really important is having that circle of people that really are your supporters, your, your, uh, your advocates, the people that are your champions. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I started Women Decision Makers is to bring together women to support one another, exactly. you know, to right. collaborate, to be resources professionally, personally. So really getting getting into, into those types of um, relationships environments is number one. It's important. Um, also to have confidence in yourself. I think as women, more so than men, you know, men will be like, oh yeah, I can do it. And they <laughs> may not have the skill or the knowledge and yet they come off with this, you know, uh, their ego or the attitude of, of confidence and or arrogance sometimes. <laughs> but um, I think for women, we second guess ourselves mm. a lot and um, we need to stop doing that. And we need to have the confidence and the love in ourselves and just know we need to get out of our own way. And I've had to do that. I know you've probably had to do that at, at different points in your life where you're the one that's holding yourself back and you need to get all you yeah, know get that way <laughs> yeah get out of your own way get get your mindset um get that negative self-talk out mm -hmm. of your head and really focus on on what it is that you want and how do you go about achieving it sometimes goals can be it can be it can seem overwhelming like okay well i want to start a business or i want to do this or i want to do that and it seems so far-fetched right. but a goal, you know, it's just a matter of breaking it down. Step. Yeah, Make taking, yes, and taking that first step. It's so important. So that would be my, That's my advice. True. Thank yeah. you so much for that. So who inspires you? I bet, you know, we all have some um, inspirational figures, maybe historical, maybe celebrity mm -hmm. that, you know, sort of keeps us going, motivates us. And who is that? Yeah, you? one would be JLo. <laughs> <laughs> because I looked at her, the Super Bowl performance, and I thought, you know, and Shakira, of course, but JLo, I thought, okay, if I could, if she can do that at 50, you know, like, okay, there is hope for all of us. Um, but one of the inspirational women 
women in, in my life personally that I've had, you know, from the day that I was born is my aunt. Um, her name's Rosanna, and she is the firstborn of um, eight children that my grandmother had. And uh, born in Guyana, my family comes from Guyana. That's where my parents were born and raised. Um, they immigrated to the States and she was always just um, a go-getter, mm -hmm. strong businesswoman. She never allowed anyone to tell her she couldn't do it, but yet she had this strength and this motivation, but there's also this softness to her where she'll give you the, the shirt off of her back. She's so generous. She's so, so giving. Sometimes I have to tell her like, you need to stop. Like, <laughs> you need to do something for yourself because she's constantly, constantly giving for others. But she's also taught me to, to make self-love and self-care a priority as well it. so you know she's t she we tell each other like you know you've <laughs> got to go do something nice for yourself and make sure you're taking so care of yourself doesn't remind us to right you know. but i've seen you know she's um in her 70s now she's still she's still probably the, one of the busiest people i know <laughs> she's always going to events and speaking Seems like it runs in the family right <laughs> i know i guess that's where i get it from you know but yeah, she's definitely the one that has inspired me to keep to keep going and to overcome the challenges that we face. And you know, we we create our opportunities. And you know, there's challenges they're, are just that challenges, right? You know, they're meant to be overcome, right? Exactly. <laughs> and and you know, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Exactly. <laughs> so talk about self care. You mentioned that you guys push each other to self care. Mm -hmm. Do you have a power routine? Is there something that you do to keep motivated? Because every time I look at you, you're just a ball of fire you know there's never a dull moment and yeah. there's got to be somewhere that energy source that comes from you know yeah um so one of the things that's important for me and my mental state my mental and physical is working out mm -hmm. and i'm not one of those people that like works out you know two hours a day that type of thing but i try to make it a part of my weekly routine mm -hmm. and i would like to go work out every day or at least do an hour or something 30 minutes um but that's not always possible so during the week, pretty much, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or actually, no, Monday and Wednesday, I try to go to the gym. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, sometimes it's a combination of just a couple of days. I go to yoga. I love it. And um, I do hot yoga. And I think that that's the balance with where I'm able to kind of go and clear my mind and, you know, include some meditation. So it's the mental health and also the physical aspect that I really love about that and it's been different things you know throughout throughout my life sometimes it's playing basketball you know right. I played um, I've played regularly for you know since I was in high school and um, I think it's just making time to do things that you enjoy that are good that are good for you right. another thing that I do is I just try to take time you know even if it's five minutes right. to just refocus and clear my head and you know it might be meditation um, and being intentional about what I'm doing instead of letting people drag me in different directions because that can happen easily it can happen. you know it's like really setting yourself up and being able to say okay so this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it and this is how my day is going to go and um and then doing things like coming to the salt room <laughs> <laughs> you know I told you the last time that I was here it was just it's amazing the difference that I feel in just being in this room yeah. and um you know taking taking time to do those just things pause, right? yeah to, to take take a few minutes and do something good for yourself because that's how we recharge and we're able to do continue to do all the things that we're we're destined to do exactly. and that we want to do and and be the people that we need to be you know for ourselves and for the others in our lives that depend on us exactly thank you so much for being my guest today it was an honor to have you uh, until next time